you know, he wasn't sleeping well, and that, that was a big concern for me. I know there was one night that he didn't even go to sleep. Could tell she had not slept in quite a while. I had to force, you know, give me that phone. Three incredibly brave mothers shared their heartache after losing their teenagers to suicide. They helped begin a discussion of the harsh reality affecting young people across East Tennessee. 10 News anchor Beth Haynes joins us as we continue the conversation with a look at some of the factors tied to teenage suicide. Robin and John, all three mothers say sleep deprivation was a huge problem for their late teenagers. We specifically wanted to know how sleep and the lack of it impacts the teenage brain. So digital storyteller Elizabeth Sims and I turned to experts at East Tennessee Children's Hospital for answers. Dr. Ehab Mansour is the chief medical director for Children's Sleep Medicine Center and Dr. Allison Elledge is a pediatric psychologist. A lot happens when teens sleep. Your brain is, is folding and growing and pruning. Thanks to hormones and teenage development, teenagers' internal clocks reset for later bedtimes. And like processors, their brains kick into overdrive, especially during sleep. A teenager can look, you know, as, as big as an adult, but his brain still growing, still developing. So it's natural for teens to go to bed later. But according to the Archives of Suicide Research, the majority are not getting enough shut-eye. About 72% of American teenagers habitually sleep less than the recommended 8 to 10 hours. If you're getting less than that, you're technically sleep deprived, and that can have a lot of negative effects. And that list is lengthy, from inattention and hyperactivity to poor judgment. On top of those, sleep deprivation is linked to an increased risk for depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts. The odds of suicidal thoughts increase 20 to 40 percent for teens who sleep one or two hours less than recommended. That risk jumps to 75 to 80 percent for teens who sleep five hours or less per night. The risks may decrease by as much as 80 percent if teens regularly sleep the recommended eight to 10 hours. And so we do know that these two things are connected. Does one influence the other? We're not totally sure, but we do know that they're, that they're important. We should be thinking about sleep. One of the biggest sleep interrupters is screen time. That's when all this stuff happens. That's what I hear, at least from my teenagers, you know, here is that, well, I can't put it away. There's 500 texts I would miss. And that's where parents can help. Doctors Mansour and Elledge suggest these seven tips to improve teen sleep. Don't allow or charge electronics in the bedroom. Set and keep a regular bedtime. Let your teen sleep as late as possible. Make sure they exercise regularly. Make sure they eat healthy. Limit screen time to two to three hours and keep their bedroom dark and cool. It's important to note, Dr. Elledge says, not all kids who have sleep deprivation have suicidal thoughts. It just increases your risk. Now, there are several myths about teen suicide. That is the biggest myth about suicide, is that if you talk to someone about their feelings about wanting to hurt themselves or commit suicide, um, that it'll, like, push them toward it. And in fact, you know, what we know about people who are in that sort of pain where they're considering something like that, um, the, the idea of it is that talking about them helps form a connection. Right now at WBIR.com slash the reality, clinical psychologist Dr. Renee Rucka dispels the top five myths of teen suicide. Coming up tonight at 11, we head back to Farragut High School, a student body healing from suicide. We see how the principal is empowering students through classroom instruction, face-to-face -face conversation, and a dog named Buck. Robin and John.